Hello, my name is Xiang Liang Zhang. I'm a associate professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at the University of Notre Dame. I'm also a part of CCAS. Today, I'm very happy to have a conversation with Connor about data chemistry. My name is Connor Coley. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Chemical Engineering in the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science at MIT. Also, thankfully, a member of CCAS. Connor, your group has been leading the research in data chemistry, and this is an emerging interdisciplinary field when AI meets chemistry. There are many subfields under the umbrella of AI for science. Do you think data chemistry is AI for chemistry? And can you please give the definition of data chemistry and share some insights? Certainly. So I think AI for chemistry is certainly part of data chemistry. Um, I tend to think of data chemistry as almost a mindset shift in how we think about approaching chemical problems. So rather than trying to motivate decision making and sort of actions in the laboratory based on intuition, we're trying to shift that to making decisions based on information. And so we're thinking about how we use chemical data to systematically make decisions about what reactions to run, what conditions to run, what molecules to make, and all of the other sorts of decisions chemists encounter in the laboratory. As far as the sort of tools go, data science is very much a core part of data chemistry. So we think about the ways that we use data science techniques, and that also extends to artificial intelligence, extends to machine learning, deep learning, because um, they're all part of this computational toolkit that we can use to help us solve problems more effectively. Uh, and I, of course, don't want to imply that everything that we're doing is you know, machine learning or deep learning or strictly very, very new, because a lot of the tools that we use are built on computational chemistry, as well as cheminformatics. And these are fields that have been around for quite some time, but recently we're exploring new ways of applying them to new types of chemical problems. Yeah, I think the definition and some discussion you shared well align with the vision of CCAS, our, our center. And I think CCAS is a great platform for a group of people, they try to collect a new type of chemical data and trying to design the new descriptor, new representation, and develop some advanced AI data science models. And uh, uh, I believe in the CCAS Center, and we are going to make some very good tools and we'll uh, move the data chemistry in the new uh, on a higher level. And I have been saying how AI techniques model have been used for chemistry in your field. And also I have been saying how our people in computer science developing new machine learning models for uh, yeah. chemistry problem. So uh, do you have some uh, observation, interesting observation and some interesting story to share with us? No, I think that the, the trend that you're noticing is, you know, when you look at the plots of the number of papers in chemistry that use AI and vice versa, the number of papers in core machine learning venues mm -hmm. that incorporate chemistry, you know, they're both exponentially increasing yes. trends. Um, and I think it's been very nice to observe over the past maybe five years, especially this virtual cycle mm -hmm. where there are challenges within chemistry that require new types of techniques or approaches, yes. or at least benefits from yes. new types of techniques that then sort of causes us to go look at the sort of computer science toolbox and think yeah. what techniques we apply. Exactly. We might find a small shortcoming. We need to yeah. change the methods. Yeah. So we're making now advances in the algorithms. And then that feeds back in. Yeah. And I think we've, we've seen a very nice cycle. Yeah. And I think yeah. the, the, more, the more folks that we see in the field that are, you know, what we sometimes refer to right as bilingual, yeah. they sort of speak chemistry and they speak yes. data science or machine yeah. learning. I think the more people are, who are looking for these kinds of opportunities, right? So you see a new advance, you know, coming out of the machine learning conference, you know, diffusion models, for example, or last mm -hmm. year, rapidly rose in popularity. Yeah. You know, you then see at the next sort of conference, the next machine learning conference, now this wave of papers applying it to different chemical mm -hmm. problems, because I think yeah. we're, we're always looking for opportunities to, to bring new tools into chemistry as well as to use chemistry right as the motivation yeah. for and, these and tools. for us i mean uh, in computer science in uh, artificial intelligence field 
we want to be inspired by the chemical problems. Uh, for example, uh, in our field, graph generation is less meaningful, but yeah. when we talk about molecular graph, it makes a lot of sense. So uh, I think it's very interesting to find this problem, the kind of new problems that also inspire the design of AI models. But I am also aware of some risks or some concerns we should be aware of. For example, uh, most of the machine learning models should be trained by a set of called training data, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, if we have bias in the data, right, or if we have noise, and it's highly possible the model will also be biased, right? Or make some kind of bias prediction. And people also have some ethical concerns about using these AI models in chemistry, of course, in some other field. So what do you think about? Yeah, no, I think that's that's exactly right. So maybe some of the, the model bias that we see in chemistry might be potentially a less ethically concerning type of bias, but then there's certainly the other conversation about dual use mm -hmm. and questions of, well, if we make a model that's very efficient at identifying a new catalyst to carry out some reaction transformation, could we use that same kind of model to identify a new toxin or some mm -hmm. other molecule with a you know, mm -hmm. less, less beneficial purpose? Um, and so I think a lot of that conversation is starting to happen now, especially yeah. with the increasing accessibility of these techniques, you know, mm -hmm. lowering maybe the skill barrier mm -hmm. to applying some of these models. Mm -hmm. I think there's some really complex discussions about you know, how many of these new concerns are uniquely enabled by you know, advances in machine learning and artificial intelligence, how many are existing concerns that are exacerbated by it, or sort of how the landscape is changing is something yeah. that we'll, we'll have to yeah. keep an eye on. Yeah, so in AI field and also in some other field use a lot of machine learning, people had a similar kind of concern or people are also trying to solve this problem. And I think CCAS is a great center that should also think about how we can address this bias, noise and mm -hmm. ethical problems. And we have uh, PIs, I think we have 16 P, uh, 14 PIs from nine universities, and we have also collaborators from industry and also other outside CCAS. And it's it's important for us to think about this in the future because uh, I think it's caused a lot of attention now. And in order to make this model be usable and be trustable, and we have to make this model be transparent and should be explainable. Otherwise, people don't trust the model and, and also limit the develop, development of the models. And I think we are going to update the website and also we are going to share some videos and also some slides and presentations in public. And I think we will have some great uh, new uh, news to report to the public in the future. Absolutely, yeah. lots of curricular materials and trainings and tutorials. Yes. and. Yeah. There'll be a lot from CCAS soon. Yeah.